Hi everybody. Today we are going to be speaking about eldership. It's a good opportunity to do this as a result of the exciting news that we have brought Keith and Christine Calder onto the Kingsgate eldership team. So I thought, what a great opportunity to speak about something which is important in the life of any local church. Now, when you speak about eldership, there is much that can be said, and uh, we just don't have the time to do everything this morning. So what I want to do is just take four passages from the New Testament and to just glean a few points from that. And hopefully when I'm finished, you'll have a bit of a, a, a deeper and a, a better understanding of what eldership is all about. And the first passage I want to look at is Acts chapter 14, verse 21 to 23. And in this passage, we see Paul and Barnabas uh, towards the end of their first missionary journey. And so we're talking here about the very, very early stages of the Christian church. And they've just been preaching the gospel in a city called Dur. And I'm going to pick up from verse 21. And I'm reading from the NET translation. After they had proclaimed the good news in that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, to Iconium, and to Antioch. They strengthened the souls of the disciples and encouraged them to continue in the faith, saying, We must enter the kingdom of God through many persecutions. When they had appointed elders for them in the various churches, with prayer and fasting, they entrusted them to the protection of the Lord in whom they had believed. Now, what might not be immediately obvious from this passage is that there was a far easier way for Paul and Barnabas to return home. They could have just gone south, south, which would have been quicker and a lot less dangerous. But what they choose to do is to retrace their steps through Lystra and Iconium, the places where they'd been persecuted and attacked, a far more dangerous journey, a far more lengthy journey to take. But they want to do that willingly because of their great love and affection for these fledgling churches that they planted. Um, and they are concerned about them. They want to make sure that they have got strong foundations and they've got things in place to enable them to deal with the challenges that they're going to face. Challenges which will come internally from within the community and challenges that will come from outside. And one of the ways that they strengthen the church is by setting in place elders, this leadership structure. And it's something you see uh, as a pattern throughout the New Testament. The gospel is preached, these communities of disciples are gathered, and elders are set in office. Now, I am aware that um, the whole idea of leadership and authority is met with increasing suspicion and cynicism in our society, and maybe even particularly in the area of church leadership. But what I want you to notice from this passage is that um, the apostles didn't see it like that. They saw leadership, yes, good leadership, as a blessing, as an essential, if you like, for these early churches and for, the, for any local church, if it was going to cope with the challenges it was going to face. Now, there are, the Bible speaks about two offices of, of leadership, the, the one being um, a deacon, which comes from the Greek word meaning servant. And um, it's, it's those who are deacons are specifically appointed for more service-orientated ministries. And the second uh, office of leadership that is spoken about in the Bible is that of an elder. And that's what we're speaking about today. Now, before I just have a brief look at what are the, some of the functions of, a, of an elder, I just want to mention two things. The first thing is that elders are seen as the highest authority in a local church. But as you read through the scriptures, you'll also notice, for example, in some of Paul's letters, how strongly he can speak into some of these local churches. And when you see that, it's a reminder that any wise eldership team would want to invite the, the counsel and the wisdom and the advice of apostolic voices into their context. Uh, men and women who have planted churches, who have laid foundations in churches, and who have got a wisdom and a gifting in that regard. And so, even though the eldership team is the highest authority in the local church, the wise eldership team invites apostolic input into that space. 
The next uh, thing just to mention is that something which would, really, would have been very foreign to Paul and Barnabas, but is a reality for us, is the importance of trustees. Um, and trustees are important because there is a, a sense that they bring a legal accountability to the eldership team. And certainly we at Kingsgate both have, have both apostolic voices speaking into our context, and we have a team of trustees. The next thing I want to mention is that um, when, it, when elders are referred to in the New Testament, they are almost always referred to in the plural, with the emphasis being on a team of elders rather than on an elder. And now that is not always possible, particularly when a, a church is small and uh, just being planted. But certainly the pattern from the Bible is a plurality of elders. Now, what is the role of the function? In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, it says that they are called to manage and direct the affairs of the church. This would include overseeing general administration and the finances. It would also involve keeping order in the church. And uh, you get a picture of that from the Old Testament and the ancient world where the elders would stand at the city gates, or sit at the city gates and allow access or deny access to people. And that is something of the role that elders play and, and where necessary to administrate church discipline. Another thing that elders are called to do is to protect the doctrine of the church. And that is why teaching and preaching is such a significant part of the eldership role. Uh, they need to be those who understand the Bible, immerse themselves in the Bible, and are able to explain and teach it. The third thing is that they are called to shepherd and pastor the church. Now, um, one of the things we are very conscious of here at Kingsgate is a desire to create a culture where we all take ownership of each other. In fact, where we, we can all pastor in some way. But it is inevitable that elders with their experience will, will carry a dominant role in this space. But there is, uh, it is important for elders to shepherd and to pastor the church. There's a definition of what eldering is all about in a book called Biblical Eldership, and it says this. In biblical terminology, elders shepherd, oversee, lead, and care for the local church. I think that's quite a good definition. But there's some part, there's one part of the, def, there's, there's one aspect to the, the role of the elder, which I don't think is captured well enough by that definition. You see, for us, eldership also involves leading the church in the direction that we feel God is calling us. Um, it's not about just maintaining the church, but about leading the church in a direction. That doesn't mean that only the elders receive vision or that only the elders uh, get, uh, that God can only speak to the elders about where the church is going. Um, I think that, that certainly that should be the case. But it is also the role of the elder to take what they hear God is saying from within the church to, to get an understanding of it and then to lead the church in the direction that God is calling. So it's not just about maintaining, but about leading the church in a direction. Now, before I move on to the next passage I want to look at, I want to emphasize that the role of an, el of the role of an elder is not about being the main man or about being a celebrity preacher. The purpose of an eldership team is to create a safe space where the whole community can flourish and that we can see the priesthood of all believers at work in a way that bears fruit, leading us in the direction that um, God is taking us. All right. Now, the next passage I want to look at is 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. And again, reading from the NET translation, it says this. This saying is trustworthy. If someone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a good work. The overseer must then be above reproach, the husband of one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, an able teacher, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not contentious, free from the love of money. He must manage his own household well and keep his children in control without losing his dignity. But if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for the church of God? He must not be a recent convert or he may become arrogant and fall into the punishment that the devil will exact. And he must be well thought of by those outside the faith so that he may not fall into disgrace, 
and be caught by the devil's trap. Now, this letter of Paul is written to the church in Ephesus who were going through some kind of turmoil. And uh, so, but Paul writes into this, into this difficult situation for the church and he speaks with a particular emphasis on leadership. There's most probably no passage in the New Testament which speaks so um, detailed about the requirements of eldership. And so we see how important leadership is for Paul at these moments of difficulty. Now, when you read through these um, qualifications, there's, there's much I can say on this passage, by the by, but I just want to focus on a few points. Uh, when you look at this passage and we see the qualifications of eldership, um, it's worth mentioning that the major emphasis you see here has to do with character, not with charisma, not with talent, not with gifting. And so often when we want to look at leadership and we look at the people who should be on leadership, we look for those things, charisma, gifting, talent, um, are they the, 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 the strongest voice in the room? But that's not what this passage focus on, focuses on. It focuses on solid consistency in our lives and not on celebrity. This is not about glamour, but the faithful application of the gospel to everyday life. It is, in some senses, so ordinary, these qualifications. The second thing is that the elder's life is meant to be an example. Um, both to those inside of the church and those out, both inside the church and outside of the church. Our lives are meant to be an example. The next thing that I want to mention about this particular passage is that when you read this passage to any group of elders, there's always a little bit of shifting in the seats because there is a, a, a recognition, a, there's a sober reminder, if you like, of the responsibilities that come with this role. And uh, there is nobody on planet Earth who has got everything perfect. And so what this passage is not talking about is perfection, but it is talking about what characterizes the life of an elder. Now, I'm aware that as I talk about leadership, as I've said earlier, there's obviously um, a degree of cynicism and suspicion, which is very evident in our culture. But I'm also aware that there are people who've experienced some abuse and, and, and uh, harshness and, and some very unhelpful uh, paradigms of church leadership, which can be really damaging. And when I reflect on that, it's, it's tough. It's, it's, it's tough for the people who've experienced um, abuse or, or um, bad examples of church leadership because it has such an impact on us. It's tough as a leader um, to, to know that. Um, and so one of the things I asked myself was, how do we as, a, as leaders uh, answer that or, or deal with that? And um, it's a big question. It is a huge question. And um, I'm not going to give it full justice this morning. But what I want to do in response to that is look at my favorite passage on eldership, which is from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. And in that it says, So as your fellow elder... And a witness of Christ's sufferings, and as one who shares in the glory that will be revealed, I urge the elders among you, give a shepherd's care to God's flock among you, exercising oversight, not merely as a duty, but willingly under God's direction, not for shameful profit, but eagerly. And do not lord it over those entrusted to you, but be examples to the flock. Then when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Well, there's three things I just want to mention from this particular passage. Is that we as elders need to recognize and understand that we're not better than anyone else. Yes, there should be a depth of Christian maturity and a, and a calling in our lives. Absolutely. But to be an elder means that we need grace every day as much as anybody else. We must never try and turn our leaders into superheroes. And we as leaders must never try to be superheroes. And when we remember that, then we are less likely to lord it over those entrusted to us. We won't desire to dominate, but we will desire to lead with the heart and the hands of a shepherd. 
The next thing to mention from this passage is we need to elder because of a genuine care and love for God's people and not for personal gain or more surreptitiously to get some emotional need met um, from the church. We cannot use the church. Eldership has a number of aspects to it, but pretty central to it has to do with the love of God's people. Eldership cannot be about a platform for ministry, cannot be about the person. It has to be about God who we love and the people who we love. The third thing is we need to remember that the ultimate reward for being faithful as an elder comes from God. And it is going to be an amazing reward that we receive before the one whom we also have to give an account for how we have led. So our reward, ultimate reward for eldership and, and how we serve in that role comes from God himself. And, and, and when we as elders do these three things, we make it easy for the next verse to be possible. And the final verse I want to look at is Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. And in this verse it says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls and will give an account for their work. Let them do this with joy and not with complaints, for this would be no advantage for you. It is good to honor those who lead us. Not to worship, but it is good to honor. And this passage from Hebrew acts as a reminder and a, and a, and a caution against any attempt to overly deconstruct the church, to undermine leadership, to do away with leadership. Because when we do that, even if it is just within our hearts, we actually damage the church and we, we damage ourselves. Because um, we as local churches flourish when the leaders who lead us flourish as well. So this passage in Hebrews 13 is an important one. Obey your leaders and submit to them because it is good to honor them. When we do that, we as a church flourish as well. Okay, I just want to finish off by saying that Michelle and I myself have been on the eldership team for over 20 years here at Kingsgate. And one would imagine that over 20 years, you will have your ups and your downs and you'll have your challenges. But Michelle and I can honestly say that over the 21 years that we, or 21 years or so that we've been on eldership, we have felt loved and supported by Kingsgate Church. And I want to say a massive thank you to all of you for that. It has been a, a blessing to lead you. And uh, one of the things that I would really just ask of you is that um, if you call Kingsgate home, that you would pray for us as an eldership team. Pray for our wisdom, pray for wisdom, pray for perseverance, pray for courage, pray for protection. Because there is a sense that when you are on eldership, you are at the, 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 on the front line, if you like. And there are real spiritual battles and opposition that you face. So I really want you to know we, we, we treasure and appreciate your prayers so that we as an eldership team can be a blessing to you. Because I can honestly say for all of those on the Kingsgate eldership team, that is our desire. We really, really want to be a blessing to you so that this church that uh, God has made us elders of can flourish. May the Lord bless you and keep you and turn his face to shine upon you.